Hello, B-Movie brothers and sisters. This is Jason Halls, and before we get into today's episode, I wanted to take a quick second to tell you that our own B-Movie, Late Afternoon of the Living Dead, is live on Amazon and streaming free for Prime members. Late Afternoon of the Living Dead is a horror comedy written and directed by yours truly. Crazy Chris Hudson is your leading man, the deadliest librarian in the zombie apocalypse. Paul Brooks and I are also in the main cast. Everyone's favorite B-movie maniac, Mike Hayes, plays several zombies and did a ton of work on the post-production. We released the movie back in 2007, but now we have a leaner, meaner new edit in glorious HD. So do us a kindness and check it out on Amazon Prime, and if you like it, please leave a positive review. It helps the movie get seen by more people because, you know, Amazon algorithm. Okay, that's it. Thank you, and back to your regularly scheduled episode. I don't even know how to fucking start this, guys, if I'm honest. I don't know how this episode's gonna go. <laughs> I'll start it for you, Mike. <laughs> B-Movie Mania. <laughs> this week on B-Movie Mania. See hot babes, see cool guns, see bazookas. In... Doll Squad. Ted, Ted V. McKell's The Doll Squad. Sabrina. Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania. And now, B Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles. Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Hello and welcome to B-Movie Mania Secret Agents. If you can hear my voice, then you are ready to talk about the movie Doll Squad by Ted V. Michaels. BM Agent... McKells? Hulls? Do you read me? I read you, Michael. BM Agent Hudson, do you read me? I read you, Michael. And BM Agent Brooks, do you read me? Agent Brooks, checking in. Let's check the computer. <laughs> eek, eek, Wait a minute, eek, did, you, did, did you refer to me as eek, BM Agent eek. Brooks? As in bowel movement? I might have. I might have. <laughs> Welcome to Bowel Movement Mania. I'm your host, Michael Hayes, tonight, and we watch Ted V. Michael's Doll Squad. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Sabrina. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Guys, everyone. Okay, so we watched the 1973 film Doll, Doll Squad. has been said about five times already. Um, <laughs> and it's by Ted V. Michaels, and I think I called him Mick, Mickles before, but it is apparently Michaels. Um, so I'll just get that out. And we saw, I saw all your tweets, everyone that tweeted about it and how, how shitty it was that in the last episode, I called him Mickles and I'm sorry. This movie may have been the inspiration for Charlie's angels. I mean, it most certainly was. And I got some details on that too. Do you? I just got that bit of information. That's all I got. Oh no. I mean, I don't have anything that officially says someone ripped it off and they got sued and, you know, but they, people, they were accused of it. Well, Aaron um, Spelling ripped off everything. I mean, look sure. at Beverly Hills 90210. Look at Tori. Quick takes! That's what we needed. All right. I think Chris Hudson's ready to go with his take. What is it? <laughs> All right. My, my quick take is that this is really just cleavage and chest hair, the movie. Mm hmm. Uh, how about you, Jason Holes? Um, my quick take is. Pretty much whatever Paul's about to say. The Doll Squad. Boom! It's a pretty good quick take. I mean, that's as quick as it gets. Let me say one other thing real quick, if you don't mind. Uh, Mike, thank you for picking this movie, because Mm -hmm. we don't get enough 70s action on B-Movie Mania, so thank you. Well, I'm almost worried my quick take on it is going to be, it was pretty standard fare. Like, it wasn't all that bonkers. It wasn't (laughs) that bad. It was just pretty much like... Ah, it was all right. Like, and just in general. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the the, thi- the thing that jumped out a little bit, um, I, it's like it was really fast paced, 
but still there were parts that felt dull. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. that's certainly true. Yeah. No, yeah, this th- my thought throughout most of this movie was I really like the plot of it. I thought there was a lot of fun stuff they did with the plot and all this kind of stuff. And if just someone who knew how to make a better movie made this, right, it <laughs> would have been better. Yeah. Hey, Chris, what's the computer got to say about that? <laughs> no, I think we're confused about what. <laughs> Okay. That's the computer? <laughs> yeah, why do you think it was on the whole time, the entire movie? <laughs> no one turned off the computer. Them. No one turned off Bertha, no turned as off the, the computer, computer was named. <laughs> well, uh, wait, wait, wait. Was, was that, Chris, was that the theme for the one of the characters we meet in the very beginning named Senator? <laughs> <laughs> Are you watching closely, Senator? There's a character on He-Man. It's a crossover. Oh. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Which I got to bring up here. I need to really address the elephant in the room right now. Okay. Is, okay. So Sabrina, you know, secret agent. She's recruiting, getting all the all of her the doll squad. She's assembling the doll squad from their day jobs of karate instructor and. Well, who's Sabrina? Sabrina. We got to back up. Paul, you want to go to the beginning? Remind me to address the elephant in the room. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> Paul. Um, since you want to get to the beginning here, can you please talk about the beginning of the film and how it starts? Yeah, it just it just goes like there's no like there's credits. There's a lot of credits, actually. But after that, it's just like you don't really know who these people are. They're they're in some sort of government facility. There's a rocket ship being launched on TV or something like that. Mm-hmm. Starflight 12. The Starflight 12, yeah. Mm-hmm. And these guys are really uh, in, interested in how the launch is going to go. Uh, it does not go well. The rocket explodes. There's a secret message <laughs> that comes over TV to these two gentlemen, as Paul was saying, in, the, in a... Senator? Uh, Senator? Senator is one of them. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, Senator and Connolly. <laughs> Mr. Connolly and Senator Stockwell are hanging out with Bertha, the computer. The big-ass because, computer. Because the it's second this thing explodes... <laughs> yeah, it, the, the, the ship explodes. They hit a message that says, you know, you should have fucking listened or whatever. And they're like, let's go talk to Bertha. And that is just the computer who then instantly spits out this dot matrix that they need to go to uh, get the doll squad. I don't know if our listeners are aware, but in the 70s, um, computers weren't these things that fit in your pockets that you listen to music and watch movies on. They took up entire rooms and they used punch cards to track uh, every uh, CIA agent um, around. Which, by the way, I, I really did enjoy how simple that little plot device was, where they're just like, <laughs> okay, who's best for the job here? Let's see what computer says. Computer <laughs> yeah. says doll squad. So they uh, get the doll squad. It's just like, nobody knows who's controlling the computer. <laughs> what do you think of the other choices? <laughs> I mean, the yeah. doll squad was picked this time. <laughs> that was a little confusing to me, though, because it, it spit out that, that print of the doll squad. And at first, maybe maybe it was just me, but at first I thought it meant that the doll squad was responsible for the explosion. Oh, <laughs> no. No, okay. The, like, another oh. problem with the beginning of the movie is that the, like the whole like big chunk in the beginning – is that there's a ton of exposition oh, jammed <laughs> jammed into just a couple of scenes where everyone's talking yeah. for the sake of the audience. No, no, even even the the uh, the message they get. They so so when the when the thing explodes, the rocket explodes. They get the secret message that comes only to the only to those guys, and it it is the perfect like sixties spy secret agent formula of words that don't make any sense, but it's yeah. every key word. I need microfilm plans of anaballistic missile with K-bomb warhead. Messenger will arrive Thursday. If I do not receive microfilm, there will be a national disaster on following Tuesday. It's just everything you want. Yeah, there's that. But also, like, the terrorists wanted the microfilm delivered via carrier pigeon. <laughs> How genius is the villain's plan to send messages to our heroes than by carrier pigeon? brilliant there's no way that could go wrong yeah like a carrier pigeon just goes where it needs to go right so you could just track it super easily (laughs) and and it's and what's great is that sort of attention to detail really plays out in every aspect of the villain's plan (laughs) they they could have put anything in the carrier pigeon's little container and let it loose and just followed it back and got him (laughs) 
Yeah. But, you know, yep. whatever. So, oh, then President calls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, President does call. President calls and says they have two weeks to crack the case. What? So, there's been a, t- a major terrorist attack on a space program, program and you're like, hey, you got two weeks. <laughs> well, okay, also, something that really jumped out, at least in my viewing experience, it didn't seem like anybody would really cared that this shuttle just exploded. Like they were so chill. No, it drove the plot, but no one was like, Oh man, that sucks that a lot of people just died. They were like, okay, let's go do our job now. Sabrina. Here's Sabrina. And what else did this whole explosion (laughs) have to do with the rest of the movie? Other than to get Sabrina, other than to, to get the doll squad involved. I have no idea. It, none really of it makes sense. No idea. Like no other plans to blow up any other space, you know, rockets other than to get Senator's attention. For <laughs> yeah, reason. Oh. For no reason. I it had nothing I to do with I think we maybe uh I think we maybe need to back up for just a second and We're still at the beginning, realize, Paul. What do you mean? <laughs> well, we haven't talked about the filmmaker who made this film. I mean, I uh-huh. feel like it's it's worth touching on the fact that, you know, we're talking about Ted V. McKells here. I don't care if it's Michaels. I'm saying McKells. Sure. And wow. he is in the B-movie mania and, you know, cult cult cinema universe, pretty well known <clears throat> for some stuff. He did sure. Astro Zombies back in the 60s. And he was a pretty prolific, uh, you know, B-movie filmmaker up until his death just a couple years ago, I believe. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not that big of a surprise, really, that things don't always make sense no, in this movie. No, that, and that and that's why I think it's so much fun because he kind of doesn't care. Yeah. Right. Now you're right; it is a bit slow and boring at times. Um, but it's just like, yeah, it would be cool if this happened. It'd be cool if that happened. Let's blow, blow up a space shuttle. Okay, does it have anything to do with anything? Not the slightest. Because <laughs> the whole bit is, I guess that's a way to get attention. Like for some, none of it makes sense. He did it supposedly the spaceship was blown up as uh, like because the senator didn't like respond to something at some point so that was the natural disaster yeah, that's natural the disaster point, Mike. they just jam but, all this story in and it's it passes by you too quickly yeah <laughs> oh you're right you're right um so have we passed the elephant in the room yet hudson i'm supposed to be my uh no not yet well sabrina's here sabrina's gonna yeah. go put together the team yeah so so the next like 20 minutes of the film is sabrina just like putting the team together yep okay another thing i did like about this if i may um the I, I, the first person she goes to get is someone who teaches karate at mm-hmm. uh and the, it's quickly evident that goons are following Sabrina as she. Uh, Wait, who's Sabrina? What are, are you Sabrina? kidding? Oh, she's she's the leader of the doll squad. There, I got it out. Of okay, the there we go. There we go. Okay, so so Sabrina goes to the karate master, and then she goes to like a hospital or a lab, and gets another girl on board, and the goons are following, and the goons are killing these women. As she's recruiting them. So I thought that yeah. was kind of a bold move because I thought yeah. those two, I'm like, oh, she's getting the squad together. These are going to be people on the squad. And it's not. If those are the top of the top, like they're the ones she goes to first, they must be the best. And yeah. They die right off. I also really enjoyed when the, when the woman in the lab died, the, he, uh-huh. the guy shoots her in the back of the, he, one, he has a silenced pistol and he sneaks right up behind her. Really no need <laughs> This brings me to yeah. the elephant of the room. Go, go, go oh, well, my, my one point about that, Chris, is that that for some reason, the goon who shoots this woman takes extra special time and attention to make sure he gets his fingers in the blood dripping out of her mouth. <laughs> he does yeah, see it's weird. It's he's like, like he just goes up and like feels her face and moves her head and just yeah. gets his fingers. But I will, all in I, the will blood. I will agree with you, Jay, that um, those first couple deaths really did surprise me because I was expecting to be introduced to some main characters here and they just get shot in the head. Right. The the girl coming out of the dojo, she, yeah, gets it right in the head and she flips around and you see that wound. I, I actually was very surprised that she just gets shot right in the forehead. Oh, it's, right. it's on the screen for a good five minutes before she falls down. Yeah. And you, you, <laughs> you think she's going to pull through kind of cause she's pretty good at like kicking. Like she's got some good moves. Yeah. And then just, bam, right in the nope, head. It's nope. real quick. Um, did no one else notice that one of the goons is holding um, Megatron? Like the toy Megatron. Like the, the toy gun Megatron is based off of? 
Totally mm. got it in his car. Is it? Totally got it. Really? I mean, no. they only show it in just a scene. It's like over That's like that. That's not possible. But he's working with the Transformers. I think the Transformers, the Decepticons are behind all of this. There. Wow, so, so this is an origin my, story for it's Transformers? It's the origin story for the Transformers. Interesting. Huh. I, I got it out there. And this just is the saying, elephant? This is... Transformers. <laughs> More than meets the eye. Okay, <laughs> okay. So Sabrina uh, has has contacted two of the women. She's supposed to meet up with them, and we, as the audience, know that they've died. Um, but uh, but she's gonna meet up anyway. <laughs> Hudson, do you want to talk about what happens at Fire and Flame, the restaurant, oh, the Rendezvous? Oh the three yeah. women are supposed to meet. This oh boy, sweet. the uh, so the goon, well, the head goon, he corners Sabrina. Sabrina. <laughs> has a little date with her at the. Uh, at a little table and uh he's gonna kill her oh yeah and because just like he killed the uh first two ladies oh, of the adult yeah. squad <laughs> and, and he shows her proof that he killed the karate woman and the scientist woman stick it in your mouth and then sabrina oh. it's the lighter and it's a fucking flamethrower <laughs> it just burns this dude's face off right there that's in the restaurant great. no one cares yeah. it's just <laughs> Yeah, that's that's Done. my favorite part about the I mean his his face is on fire like his flesh is melting and the people sitting in the booth behind them are like, "Huh, this is weird." Huh. Is this part of the fanfare? This is this a Brazilian steakhouse? Okay. Like there is an extreme lack of reaction that someone's face is on fire in the next booth over. <laughs> they thought he just ordered something oh. special from the menu. God. So so after this, she meets up with the senator and Mr. Connolly again to like debrief. Senator, sorry, senator, senator. Sabrina. Sabrina meets with Senator and Mr. Connolly um, to at, at a skeet shooting range because I guess that's wherever. <laughs> but there, they talk about stuff. We find out that there's a uh, a previous organization that they have like I don't know gotten rid of, but they all put these silver discs in the agents' necks, and that's how they could tell each other apart. Um, yeah. which, which comes important later, but like, that's, that's, that's really the only reason we have that scene, but it's <laughs> well, a lot of talking, not just that there's, it's, it's a whole exposition scene. And also Sabrina <laughs> keeps pulling shotgun shells out of her cleavage. Oh, is that where she's getting <laughs> yep. them? I didn't notice that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh man. Well, Sabrina, so sorry. Sabrina <laughs> also has, uh, some other stuff that she shows off. She has another, uh, she has a tackle bag she has. Yeah. Um, suitcase secret full of weapons. explosives. Yeah. Weapons. Did anyone recall what's going on in that bag? <laughs> it's a lot uh, of stuff. I don't there's remember like the specifics. There's a liquid that if you drink it, you'll explode. Oh, yeah, the explosive roofies. Uh-huh. Those are uh-huh. great. Yeah, the explosive. Those will come into play later. And they're mace, I think. Yeah, she's got oh, mace in her ring. Concentrated yeah. mace. In there's, her ring. In on her, her ring, finger. yeah. There's also jelly night grenades with time fuses. Mini cameras with instant developing, altitude bomb, breakaway rifle with scope, lipstick recorders, signal homers, uh, and and uh, oh yeah, so, so that the nightcap you guys talked about the the lick, the stuff you put in the in alcohol, it, she calls it Sabrina's little nightcap, nitrous light, add it to alcohol and it makes people explode, and they refer to it as the highest explosive we've got short of the atom. So it's you know serious it's business, be guys. A big explosion. You know that no one can be within like a ho- couple of miles when this thing goes off. It's sort of a combination of like James Bond gear and like the '60s Batman like gadgets. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to describe that. That's good. Oh, oh, you know another another little bit here that's that Sabrina um, drops is that like they believe there's a uh, undercover spy in uh, yeah, Senator's. Yeah get crew and so it cuts right into the computer room and it doesn't take long to find out like sabrina immediately goes oh it's the secretary she knows it literally she just takes knows no it. time she does yeah, before no then time. she says i believe she says i need to get into the computer room because she just fuck it and then she goes in and finds the mole she just knows right away and just knows and so i don't i wrote this down i don't know what remember i don't remember why sabrina says this but when she catches sweet little nancy she says, "Sex and security just don't mix." <laughs> yeah, that's a good line. Oh, because she, because Nancy was fucking uh, Amon, the, the, the villain. Guy. We find out. Yeah, yeah we find I out. I don't his think name. we've mentioned his name yet. No, well, he. This is where we first learned about him. I right didn't. Here. I didn't catch his name until like three quarters into the movie. Amon O'Reilly. 
Yeah, they may not mention him at this point. We just know he's the bad guy. No, they do. They, he, they, he... they do, because she says the name finally before... Nancy, Nancy says the name before she takes a cyanide pill oh, and kills right. herself. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, it's, yeah. and yeah. Eamon O'Reilly is the love of her life, and he's an ex-agent. He's an agent gone rogue. Right, and also Sabrina's <laughs> former lover. Yes, this is also true. Um, we also find something else out that confused me for the entire movie. Um, we find out that the secret base for this guy is on an island off the coast of Venezuela. Of course. San Lorenzo. Why is that confusing? Uh, because, (laughs) Paul, first of all, there is a San Lorenzo, Venezuela, but it's not an island, but that doesn't matter. What does matter is what happens later and how they get to said island via a jeep at some point <laughs> and other things that happen and how they're in the United States and they travel back and forth. It does, the time doesn't make sense on any of this. Also, driving to an island doesn't make sense. Or why they even split up. I don't We'll get there. So Sabrina now knows what, who she's got, what she's got to do. She needs to get more women without them dying. So she's got to get the, the B squad of the doll squad. <laughs> The B doll squad. <laughs> you know what's kind of weird about this is that they almost treat this like maybe it's a sequel because they treat these characters sort of like, oh, we're getting the band back together like they had been in a previous film. That's the kind of feeling that I got from it anyway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like am, supposed, like, am I supposed to know who this 1890s looking librarian woman is? Maybe. Yeah. Or uh, the stripper I think what, in Vegas with a live I, I think, band. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, she was great. Uh, I think what they didn't really clarify too much is I believe when the when Bertha spits out Doll Squad, I, s- I think it says under the leadership of Sabrina. Um, so I believe that means maybe Sabrina's got to get members of the Doll Squad to join her. And there's probably a bunch of them or something, maybe. I don't that know. That makes but. sense. I do want to point out, you know, we might not recognize – um, m- many of these actresses or any of these actresses who make up the uh, doll squad, but I did a little bit of homework. And, what do you got? You know, a lot of them were in a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. um, Francine York, who played Sabrina, <laughs> had a long career all the way up until last year when she died. She was she was working the entire time. Um, and then also the, the only one that I really um, picked out was... Tura Satana, who played the uh, stripper in the yeah. nightclub, she was the lead in uh, Russ Meyer's Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. Mm-hmm. So I picked up on her immediately. She's in Astro Zombies too, right? I think. She, I, yeah. Maybe, she's yeah. In a bunch been a long of, she's time. in a bunch of Ted V's stuff. Right, um, yeah. Since we're talking trivia about these women, uh, here's an interesting thing I found. Well, there's a documentary about Ted V. Michaels uh, narrated by John Waters. It's on Amazon and I think a couple other places that I watched. Cool. Um, and she, Francine York, tells a very disparaging story about how about four years after this movie, she was auditioning for Charlie's Angels. And <laughs> oh wow! So wow. she's auditioning in it. She's in the she's in the room with the casting director, or whoever it was. I forget specifically which which who Aaron it was. Spelling too. Uh, sure. But the whoever it was that was auditioning her uh, suggested that she do something special for the role. Wink, wink. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, no. And she said, hell no. And then he said, all right, well, I guess you don't get the part. And then she Uh. didn't get the job. Fucking disgusting. (laughs) Wow. Also on the subject of casting, Mike, I read that uh, Sissy Spacek auditioned to be one of the dolls. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, I read that, too. too. Okay, so, so Sabrina gets some more people. You guys mentioned the librarian and a stripper. There's a psychiatrist and a swimmer as well. They're all part of the doll squad. So they got to get together, but they need one more uh, doll to join up with them, to complete the squad. And that is SQ-6. Secret Agent SQ-6. She's the carney. <laughs> I, can I just say how absurd all their their normal, their day jobs are? They're all secret agents. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, and this, the this is the jobs. part of the movie, too, where we first meet Eamon, and it cuts to him. And yes. the thing I think yeah. is funny is he's on the phone and his first line of the movie is, you really think the doll squad could stop me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's fully aware that the doll squad is the coming for him. Yeah. Well, it's it's so, man, the, the, the government that the doll squad is part of is so fucking just corrupted uh, and unsafe. 
that that not only does he instantly know, but he knows that they're going after SQ6. They know where FQ, SQ6 works. They have a plan to kidnap SQ6, <laughs> and it gets a whole thing. And I believe this is all from Venezuela. And I believe it works, doesn't it? It, it totally does. Works. It totally works. It's leading to one of my favorite parts of the movie, too. <laughs> well, real quick, the plan works, but that same evening, his his henchman is in the carnival, <laughs> wherever the fuck it is in the U.S. somehow, and then the plan does work, and that same night, they get back to Venice fucking... Sw- I don't... It, oh. Yeah, it's I all didn't over. think about that. The time doesn't make sense at all in any way, but that's fine. That's common practice in these types of movies sorry what's your favorite jay do you want to talk about this favorite thing of yours uh sure so the idea is they kidnap sq6 the carney kim yeah her name is kim they kidnap the carney and they put her in the trunk and they have a doctor and they're going to change Eamon's girlfriend maria to make her look like the carney and they're going to do some plastic surgery so um the way this this whole thing goes down when they the doll squad meets up with her Sabrina somehow just knows it. Sabrina. Sabrina just takes her and rips off her wig and her face, and it looks awesome. <laughs> like, like if that were the actual, <laughs> yeah, if that were the actual yeah. SQ six. Come off! <laughs> yeah, come oh, on. tear her face off. Tear at her face. <laughs> yeah, it just rips off this wig, and it's a, it's like a perfect face, and because c- it is the actress still. And then when Sabrina goes to pull the face off, it rips off like a rubber mask and it's she's holding it in her hand and then it's back to maria's face again yeah, yeah. it's, it's I, great i, I, I just want to say something, something about this part too is that you've got, the doll squad is filled with these badass kick-ass women right except when they're not supposed to kick anyone's ass and then they're just completely helpless <laughs> like the, the goon that kidnaps sq6 is just just <laughs> just knocks the gun out of her hand and picks her up and she's kicking and screaming, yeah. ah, and she's just thrown to the trunk that's yeah. It. yeah, you're right. If it's not scripted, they're not badass. Yeah. It's yeah. It, there's not much <laughs> of a balance of power for the, for the villains scenes. or whoever's supposed to lose the fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> they kidnap Maria, so th- they get Maria. They bring her back to the the Doll Squad headquarters, and and they don't tell us, but we're supposed to assume that the psychiatrist has hypnotized her. <laughs> yeah, and, they don't say it at all. No, she, they're just asking just, her questions. She's telling them, and at some point she freaks out. And I really liked how they were they were just like, "Oh no, you don't have to answer the questions if you don't want to. It's fine. <laughs> oh, it's okay." It was like it was really sweet of them, just you know, not being abusive and not you know, you know Geneva Convention guys. So it was, <laughs> it was real great. This is another weird thing too. So after they get the plans for, or they get, they talk to Maria, they get Eamon's plan and then they break into this doctor's house and place Maria in the bed and rescue <laughs> the carney and escape. Yeah. So then Eamon calls and is like, okay, we're done with, we're done with my girlfriend, Maria. Uh, you can go, or the, no, we're done with the carney. You can kill the carney. So he goes in and kills the carney, but really blasts Maria. He asks, "Why hasn't Maria contacted me yet?" Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> great. <laughs> you uh, fucking shot her in the face. <laughs> a bit of a bit of trivia: the the guard who kills Maria is played by the one and only writer and director Ted V. Michaels. Yeah, I knew he was in there somewhere. I was trying to spot him. Uh-huh. I only knew because of the documentary. He mentioned it in that. And I got to say, gotcha. we're we're kind of moving through this plot here. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, there's, there's. I mean, the thing is, it's it's. There's not a lot to it. It's about as basic of a sort of Bond style action plot as you can get. Yeah, unfortunately, it's it's. There's there's some peaks in it, but there it's fairly straightforward and kind of bland. Yeah, it's um, weird. It's it's a weird thing. Yeah, so, okay, so they do that, and then, okay, so the Doll Squad is supposed to go now to Venezuela, um, and they decide... Should take about a half hour. Yeah, yeah, you know, something quick. Mm, they're going to take a... 20 minutes if they hurry. Yeah, they're okay. going to take a pleasure cruise. Uh, well, four of, <laughs> four of them are, um, are going to take a boat to Venezuela, an island off of Venezuela. They're taking a boat, which makes sense. The other two... I don't remember are taking a jeep they're taking a jeep Jeep. paul they're gonna drive to the (laughs) island off venezuela two of the girls in the jeep drive up to some structure like a checkpoint or something (laughs) okay that's a good word for it that's a very good (laughs) word for it. like a checkpoint and and 
Eamon's guards are there and they decide to flirt with the guards and then they slip some <laughs> of the explosive powder into this bottle of vodka and talk them into drinking it. And this is great. It doesn't take much really talking. Good. They no, hand the bottle back and forth and drink it and literally explode. <laughs> it's so good. They're that was really good. Mm, mm, that hits the spot. <laughs> no, <laughs> vodka never hits the spot. So, but but what they were doing there is, like, why did that happen? Like, why did any of that... No. Well, Jay, Jay let, me, let me back you up just a little bit here. Before When they get to this and, and they start flirting, <laughs> the guards are asking the... the the dolls, what they're doing out there. Uh, we've just been doing a little rock hunting. I never heard of anyone doing any rock hunting out here. Yeah, that is their <laughs> excuse for everything. Rock, rock amazing. hunting. And, oh, they're famished, so, mmm, cookies are good. Cookies and vodka. Cookies amazing. and vodka. But they don't <laughs> say it like that, Hudson. The, the guards are being pretty, like, kind of aggressive, and they're like, no, we're just yeah. rock hunting. And they're like, what? That's bullshit. And then they're yeah. like, mmm, so hungry. They don't believe them. Mm. And they go, how about some <laughs> cookies? <laughs> <laughs> like they get real sensual like they're implying something with those wait cookies. what was that mike Can you said what was it oh sorry you want a clean take of this uh no i just want All another right. take of it oh okay <laughs> how about some cookies <laughs> <laughs> there we go um but again then mm, that vodka hits the spot yeah then they don't oh, feel good God. then they explode and paul <laughs> since you're the one who can't seem to handle his vodka uh, would you, could you describe how the explosions happen here and throughout the entire movie? We haven't t touched on that. Oh, the explosions are great. Uh, I mean, the the guys are there. They're having some serious stomach problems. They start, you know, sort of like gripping their stomach and, yeah, making noises. And then it, it's it's essentially the Big Bang. I mean, just yeah. everything in the universe explodes and they're gone. Yeah. So they don't so much as explode as disintegrate, right? I guess. It's like a little effect, and then they're gone. Would you describe the explosions in this film as realistic? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the word that I would use. I mean, they probably uh, didn't have the budget to, you know, get, like, dummies and put a bunch of blood packets in them. No. Although I will say that, I, that there was a, a decent amount of blood in this movie. Sure. Uh, maybe a little bit more than I expected, so... Well, what I'm trying to get at is the explosions throughout this film were done with, like, an overlay process yeah. um, that yeah. was just, yeah. like, red that they made bigger. Like, there was no actual explosion-looking thing. And, and at first, it, it was kind of distracting, but I kind of got used to it. I I, yeah. I liked it well, as a stylistic What do you think it was, it's, though? It totally worked for me at the end. Like an orange yeah, no gel clue. or something. Yeah. yeah, it was just weird. It was just a weird yeah, I, I would be thing. curious... I would be curious to learn how they how they actually did that effect, like what the actual process behind it is back in the day. Um, meanwhile, the other four women are on this pleasure cruise on a rock hunting trip to Venezuela. <laughs> hey, I, I just want to say, I just want to say here real quick that this is about what I noticed that the the music it was being played like a like a music in a video game, like the Super Mario level. Oh was yeah, so oh the yeah, entire thing. Just the music just does not let up. It's the same tune over and over. <laughs> hey Ted, should we, should we quiet the music? They're, the ladies are gonna talk. Should we turn the music down, Ted? <laughs> no, let's keep it going. So they're on this cru this cruise. Which another fun fact I found out from this documentary. Uh, the actual captain of this boat that they're on was so distracted by the beautiful women that was on his ship, <laughs> he crashed into another boat and broke the mast of the other boat. <laughs> wow. Okay, so on this boat is the captain, uh, who seems pretty clueless and buys the whole bit of, uh, you know, the Vacation rock hunting. Girls. And then there's Raphael. This little, I don't know what he is, this skinny guy that's on the boat guide. with them as well for some reason. Yeah, yeah you're who, right. He was their guide. Who, who you might also recognize as the actor uh, Plitt was in the miniseries V and V the Final Battle as the Mexican guy who helped people escape being eaten by the visitors. Ah. Oh. Little, little trivia there for you. And how nice. is that supposed to work? Like, these girls <laughs> are there undercover on vacation, and this deckhand <laughs> just knows that... They're, because don't because, think about it yeah no you can't because the girls go to do their mission and then he f jumps off the boat later and swims after them i think he says he wants to make sure they're going to be okay 
But oh, that's really, what he tells no, the captain, he right? Yeah, that's what he tells the captain. But really, he's working for Amon. Yeah, he is. So, for drugs, even not I even want to know money. who isn't working for Amon at this point. I am. He has people in. Wait, every, what? Yeah. Huh. Whoa, 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 whoa! Shh. What did you just say, Jay? Uh, I said the next part has the girls in oh, okay. green jumpsuits and Maybe for a second, um, they're. Uh, doing their mission. Gotta love those jumpsuits. Hey, Paul, Paul, do you yeah, think like... they helped each other dress into the jumpsuits? Because those those uh, zippers are in the back, so awfully hard to reach. So, I bet the Yeah, dolls... I mean, you know, you gotta help each other yeah, out in exactly. that sort of situation. Yeah. Alright. That's what I thought. Slowly. Wanted some uh, <laughs> sensually. Okay, so these green jumpsuited women are running mm. around the grounds of Joshua Tree, I mean Venezuela, <laughs> and and the, the bad it guys... Could have that... been Calabasas. <laughs> yeah, it could have been Calabasas. Everything's in uh, Calabasas. Yeah, but the bad guys know that they're there somehow, but whatever. Because the plot's uh, also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because the plot. So this is where we find out that Raphael is working for Eamon for drugs, and he's like, I'll go get the women, and he does, so they oh, get he captured. Totally does, yeah. Uh, and then they get chained up to, a, like, a, a clothing rack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, except for one. One is chained to a wall like a dungeon. The other three are to a clothing and, rack. And who's and who was that? Oh, Sabrina. Sabrina. This is a sad moment in time. Because... Yeah, this was surprising yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah, Paul. Well, Paul, why don't you mention why it's so sad? Well, they're they're trying to uh, get out of this uh, coat rack or clothing rack <laughs> rack that they're tied up to, <laughs> and. They pretty much all get loose, except for um, which one is it that's still kind of chained up? The Carney. SQ6, the Carney. yeah. Which, which makes they me think get... that she's part of the doll squad by mistake, because she gets <laughs> captured without putting forth any sort of fight. She gets she's killed the right new girl. off. She, she just, was yeah, the new one. They the question whether or not she could handle the mission. Yeah, yeah. but unfortunately, no, uh, she couldn't one of the guards comes in as they're, try- as they're trying to unchain her, and it's too late. She gets shot twice in the chest, and she dies right Rasta. there. That would be a crappy place to die. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a good no thing good. the doll squad leaves no one behind, either. Oh, no, never <laughs> mind. They completely forget about her. Yeah. <laughs> Sabrina's like, oh, well, like a, like a quarter of a second after she expires, she's like, eh, well, what are you going to do? And this is also yes. the time where they, they that Eamon like talks about his plan to infect rats with a virus oh jeez <laughs> not just a not just a virus the fucking bubonic plague the bubonic the plague the bubonic plague they're going to put that in cities all like they have agents all around the world that are ready to distribute these bubonic plague infested rats oh, so and Eamon wants Sabrina amazing. to join him oh my god but wait why why because he wants the missile plans so God. that's his threat is to do that i guess i don't know but that actually you know what that's that's one of my favorite lines as well right here that he has like all these world like henchmen <laughs> from different countries around this table and they're like well what about our families and he's like well you know your families will be taken care of they'll, they'll get uh <laughs> yeah you know uh immune you know we'll make sure that they're okay all right well what about our friends sir in this business, we have no friends. If you think otherwise, you had best leave now. No, I, no, no, I, I, I didn't mean that. I was simply speaking for others who might have a friend or two. I myself, of course, had none. <laughs> so, so, oh shit! This is where. Okay, so they keep talking about these doctors or this doctor, right? That's doing all the plague shit for him. Doctor um, Heyman. Yes. Um, are there twins? Because there's two of that motherfucker. They're, yeah, I think they like <laughs> clone them or something, don't they? Or like they do I have face no off clue. Trick? I don't know. I have there's no clue. Uh, but uh, there's two, and they're never addressed. All, all I all I know is that is that one of them is Doctor Kahaman, and the other one is credited as Mister Kahaman. So one is of them it? went okay. to doctor school, and the other one uh, was the sl- lazy one. Uh, the other one's good at flamethrowers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what tr- pushes this plot along once more? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the deckhand guy is going to lead Sabrina somewhere, and he starts pushing on her one too many times, and oh, she no kicks the crap out of him. But she starts trying to get, like, clues. She's using her microfilm and all that stuff to get, like, evidence about oh, stuff. Yeah. She needed some when, like, some evidence of the bubonic plague or some yeah. bullshit. 
Right. When fucking Burned Boy shows up again from the beginning of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Missing an eye because she burned out his eye with the lighter. <laughs> and then I think she stabs him in the other eye. Is that what happened? She, dude, this guy, he tries to strangle her, right? And so he gets stabbed and shot a bunch of times. And so Eamon and the, the guards here, and they go get Sabrina. Um... And Eamon or somewhere around here says he's going to inject her with the plague. But I'll be honest, this is, I drifted off for like a minute when I was watching this. And when I woke up, Sabrina and Eamon were kissing. Oh, well, we could fill you in with that. We, okay, so we yeah. did find out at some point within the past, I don't know, X number of minutes, that the place is rigged to blow at midnight, which isn't that <laughs> far off. Okay, so Jay, you didn't miss much when he dozed off because uh, Burn Guy comes in, she, uh, she gets captured again, Eamon's going to put the the plague in her, yeah. uh, and then basically he takes her to the bedroom to uh, try to convince her to be his queen. This, this I saw, yeah. And this is where they start joking about how Sabrina would kill him. Well, oh, yeah. well be- yep. just before that, maybe the best line in the movie is uttered. And maybe in any movie. Any? <laughs> any. Well, perhaps you remember when Sabrina looks over at Eamon and goes, do you have the picture of Martini by your bed? You have that picture of Martini waiting in your room at night? That's it. There it is, folks. The best line in cinema history. <laughs> you know, you know the warmed martini you usually keep by your bed or maybe the same jug you've had there for the past 10 years since we used to fuck? I don't know. Hey, listen, Mike, super villains live a different lifestyle, okay? I know, but I just love that she knew he would have a picture of, Mar- a picture of martini on his nightstand. That's how well they know each other. What I, now what I really want to know is if the, mar- if the picture of martini was shaken or stirred that's a good question mm. I don't know. well i tell you where it was dumped <laughs> okay jay so you this is right. this is hands down the best part of the movie no this right is absolutely this is amazing uh yeah. who wants it paul you haven't said much do you want to do it i can certainly start let okay. me let me start it um it is it is revealed that uh Eamon never really had a plan to make sabrina sabrina oh, yeah. he's his queen <laughs> <laughs> but instead is planning on killing her. And Sabrina's reaction is essentially, hmm, okay, well, I guess there's no way around that because you're, you know, clearly more powerful than, than I am. So doesn't she like sort of say, <laughs> well, you know, let me tell you about how I would kill you if I did have the opportunity. And he's like, oh, okay, this will be fun. Before you die, tell me how you would kill me. And she sort of walks him through that. It's, but it's told in like this flirty way that we've all had with significant others. The minute you turned your back, I kill you. Oh, 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 Sabrina. That's why I love you. It's like, we've all joked about maybe not killing a significant other, but like <laughs> something uh, like that. Mike. What? I said not. I said not. <laughs> anyway, but it's like that kind of thing, like, oh, I'm like, ha, ha, ha. And then you, like, tickle the person. Oh, I think I'd just give you a little push like that. Yeah, <laughs> but it's so, like, awkward. And then, Jay, where does it go from there? Not awkward, but, well, like. she takes the martini and dumps it all over him. Oh, you you got me with the martini. That's why you're going to kill me, to me. And then rips the lamp cord out of the wall. Or she rips the lamp out and electrocutes him. He's like giggling the whole time until he gets shocked. So then he uh, wraps the light cord around her neck. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she... it doesn't kill him. Like she tries to electro- yeah. electrocute him, but it 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 hurts him a little bit. But it definitely does not get the job done. No, it just makes him mad. Well, this is where uh, that concentrated mace really that that was introduced in the skeet shooting scene really comes into play because. Eamon is choking her out with a phone cord or some bullshit, and psh, right in the face, Mace. Hey, Chris, you show mm-hmm. concentrated Mace ring in Act One. Use the concentrated <laughs> Mace ring. Concentrated Mace ring. Yes, That's right. <laughs> That's right. I, w- I um, wish they had. I wish they'd shown Chekhov's broadsword because it comes out of nowhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, after after he gets maced or whatever, she she takes the opportunity to 
take I, what would you call it a, a broadsword? Did you say a broadsword? Yeah. I, I would I would call it a decorative sword. Okay, a decorative, <laughs> decorative sword. broadsword. Regardless, it should be noted that swords will cut you fucking no. wide open. Yeah, it's swords are that's not that's exactly what it does here. Swords are swords are not for decoration and no. this is no. proof of it. Nope. So she takes this sword off of the wall. It's just sitting there. It's not attached that, and, to anything. And we haven't seen it at all this entire movie. You know? No, it's just no, there. No, it just appears. Yep. And there it is. she uses one hand, one hand to pick it, like, pick it up by the handle and puts her other hand directly <laughs> on the blade. <laughs> decorative. It's decorative. It's not sharp. And shoves it straight into Eamon's intestines. And then he's dead. He's dead. He dies. Movie's over. He dead. Freeze frame. Credits. Movie well, over. Roll credits. No, 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 boys. That's my rating bit. time. No, that's my da, bit. Da, 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 oh, the movie is not right. over. <laughs> it is almost over. But there's at least one important part that must be brought up. <laughs> What's that? Well, oh, I know what you're getting to. Let me walk through to the point. <laughs> Everyone runs away. Everyone tries to escape. The doctor gets in a plane. It explodes. The compound explodes. Big explosion for the compound. And they all, all the, all the doll squad get in the Jeep and they're driving away in the middle of the night, shooting their guns. And at some point, the doctor clone gets out with a malfunctioning flamethrower. And then the Tura, Tura <laughs> jumps out and says, Big Red Bazooka. <laughs> <laughs> and hands her this fucking giant bazooka. <laughs> and the guards are like, like 10 feet away aren't they they're just like standing there and mike i'm gonna give you this one this is an actual bazooka yeah baby (laughs) finally wow (laughs) my day has come hudson uh and then they she blow oh yeah she blows the shit out of him but also the flamethrower guy's back just lights on fire for whatever reason (laughs) so they get back on the boat uh they say the rock hunting trip was cool we get one Uh, last bikini scene one of the one of their friends is staying behind. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but hey, don't they pick up two extra girls along the way, though? Because the Jeep girls are on the boat now. So they lost one, but picked up two more. That, that never got brought out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that didn't get brought up. No, but yeah, then, then they call in. Hey, we're done with the mission. And the, the Senate's whore is like, well, you, your job starts tomorrow for a new one. <laughs> She's like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, they they end up getting a week's vacation. <laughs> a week, wow. <laughs> uh, After half and your friends have died. This was so weird. Like, Sabrina's talking to the captain, and he's like, wow, this must be some life. And she's like, ha yeah. And then it just freeze frames, and that's it. Movie's over. <laughs> like, in the yep. middle of a conversation. For real. <laughs> no bit. Jump to credits. Rating time. All right, boys. Uh, it's time to rate this son of a bitch. Um... Let's let's do one out of a hundred signal homers uh, nice. from from her tackle bag. Um, signal and, homer uh, in your tackle bag. Signal homers. God. Um. Jeez. Does anyone want to jump out in front of this bus? I mean, I'll do it. All right, Brooks. Let's hear it. You know, um, it was a slow movie, okay? It's not the sort of thing where I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. Um, however, that being said, even though I didn't really enjoy watching the movie all that much, I do you know, try to keep in mind the perspective of the fact that this probably was the inspiration for Charlie's Angels. Um, there was some, some Kill Bill got influenced by this movie in the first, in the first chapter of Kill Bill. There's things like that where, you know, Ted V uh, put something together that that did stick with some people. So that with that in mind, you know, it's Ted V. I got a little bit of a soft spot for the guy. I'm going to go 46 signal homers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Hudson? All right, I think I uh, may have enjoyed this a little more than Paul. I mean, it's, it's kind of a harmless movie. There's not really anything that I'll remember coming out of this but it was pretty influential to the certain people and i don't know it's kind of a great it'd be a fun thing to have on like in the background at a party or something or just i don't know having it it's a great background movie so uh i'm gonna give it a, oh and the theme song is so it'll get stuck in your head so just for that i'm giving a little higher score just for the the music but uh, i'm gonna go with uh 55 signal homers mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. all right halls Okay. What is uh, it? You know, I'm going to keep this whole thing 
ramping up a little bit, I think. Um, yeah, it, it, it's kind of boring, but there's enough little crazy things that are amusing. Um, it's not something you're going to go back to a lot, but I'd say it's definitely worth a watch. Um, and trying to position this with my other ratings throughout time, I came out with uh, a, actually a 66 signal homers. All right. All right. Well, gosh, what can what else can be said? I think you guys really hit it home with everything. I've, it's 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 unoffensive in a way, you know. Like it, there's more exciting movies, but it's it's. I enjoyed watching it. I watched it twice. I didn't care. It was fun. Um, and it is a slice of history and shit. I'm going to keep it on, you know, this side of 50. So I'm going to go, uh, 60 signal homers. There it is. All right. We did. It. I did not expect mm-hmm. to be the highest ranking on that. Holes. What's coming up next? On the next episode of B movie mania, where do teenagers hang out these days? Nobody Science. knows. Uh, Nobody uh, knows for sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like us to look back at a time when the cool place to hang out was the mall. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. On the next episode of B Movie Mania, shopping is going to cost us an arm and a leg. Yeah. Because we are going to watch Chopping Mall. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, I'm excited about this one. I've wanted to see this movie in for like 30 years. It looks oh. like a lot of fun. Um, have you have you not seen it? I have not seen it. Scary robots oh. go nuts on some teenagers stuck in a mall. It's going to be good. Um, you can find it on Amazon Prime or YouTube. So you got plenty of ways to chop. <laughs> so join us next time and, and things are going to get a little nutty. Chop till you drop. <laughs> So Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook or Twitter at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! BMovieMania.com. <laughs> Leave us a rating. Buy a t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> please go to please find B Movie Manny on your on podcast stuff and rate us and reviews. It really helps. Uh, go to our website, bmoviemania.com. You can buy shirts there. You can do a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> I just want to make sure we got something over the top. <laughs> you can't fucking do that. <laughs> yeah, when when not obviously not tonight or whatever. But if you have some, if you have a variety of explosions, I'm gonna need them for what I have planned. Here, I'll do it right now. <laughs> All right, if you, if you, Hudson, if you want to send those to me, you can. Hey, I've given you two already. Here's another one. <laughs> They're going to be on the still recording. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> we're just making more and more progressively stupid war sounds. <laughs> Boom shakalaka. Quaka! <laughs> I'm just giving Mike some explosions. Pew, pew, <laughs> Jay's pew. helping. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Still recording? <laughs> <laughs>